good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I am, I am glad. Uh, I, just, uh, I just want to say briefly that I'm glad that um, I am from Guatemala. I am a historian of Latin America. And I am glad that there is an event of this nature on campus because I think it's important to, to give uh, the, its proper importance to, to the study of Latinos in the United States, especially in the context in which we are living uh, currently now. So uh, having said that, I will be mo the moderator of the panel on student testimonials. Um, the, the title of the panel is What this Knowledge Means to Me. We'll have three uh, sets of presentations. Uh, the first uh, group of uh, presenters will be the USLS ambassadors. Then they will be followed by the USLS uh, pro student program assistants, and then we'll have a perspective from the 4U uh, uh, Promise program. Uh, each presenter will have five minutes, and then we'll have questions for, and answers for the end. Uh, so we'll start with our, our ULS, uh, USLS uh, ambassadors, and we'll start with Kimberly Thomas, uh, who is a senior in world languages and cultures, but I don't think she's here. Uh, so uh, uh, I know her because she's my, in my class. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll st actually start with Joe Medina, who is a junior in industrial technology. Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming out today. And uh, thank you, Dr. Suarez, for putting this whole thing together. We really appreciate it. So this is a really special day, uh, 25 years of this symposium. But um, you know, I got involved with USLS, uh, you know, two years ago, or well, uh, just over a year ago, I guess. And um, that was uh, I took uh, USLS 211, and um, that's when I had Dr. Suarez for the first time. And that was the first class I ever had that had, um, you know, a majority of Latino students. You know, I was surrounded by. Um, a lot of people who I could relate with, and that was the first time I ever had that, actually. So a little bit of intro about me. I'm a uh, fifth year senior in industrial technology, and so I'll be graduating here in May of 2020. And you know, my hometown is Moline, Illinois, so just across the Mississippi River, not too far away. And um, uh, you know, a couple of my hobbies would be you know, staying outside. I like hiking, fishing, anything with sports. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, the stuff that I really like to do. And so, uh, next slide. A little bit of uh, background about my family would be, uh, uh, yeah, so I am biracial. Um, you know, my dad, he came from Italian descent. My mom is uh, of Mexican descent. And a lot of my family comes from Southern Texas. So El Paso and um, Brownsville. And they moved up here in the 60s because of John Deere, the Industrial Revolution uh, that really kind of sparked the Midwest. And so then, you know, my entire family moved up here. None of them had actually gone to college before then. And so I would actually be the first of uh, my entire family to do that. And uh, it was really sparked by just my parents telling me I can do anything I wanted to do. And so um, a lot of what... Uh, came with that though is uh, when my family moved up here, there was a lot of lost history and we, you know, we just didn't talk about a whole lot of uh, my past. And so when I got involved with USLS 211, I actually got to learn a lot of um, the history of the Latino culture that happened, you know, with the formation of the United States. And it was really special too. And so that's what inspired me to become a, uh, you know, a student ambassador in the program. Uh, next slide. So my involvement with USLS, it started off uh, pretty slow as we were revamping the program, both me and Kimberly. We didn't necessarily know what we were walking into, but you know, Lucia was a great guide and uh, you know, she gave us a good, um, you know, good direction, good lead. And so a lot of what we wanted to do was um, get more student interaction, see if we can get more students involved coming to events, and you know, being a part and excited of the Latino culture here at Iowa State. And so after getting to meet the faculty and the staff and, you know, starting to brainstorm some ideas, then you know, things started really rolling. And uh, luckily, through some good people, you know, we made some good connections and uh, we started getting some events going. As you can see through the pictures on here, uh, there's um, the sugar schools from Dia de los Muertos. One thing we noticed was there wasn't necessarily an event planned last Halloween or, uh, you know, last October, November. 
for Dia de los Muertos, and so we wanted to start an event. And uh, you know, with the help of the Spanish club, we actually got um, some good funding, and we got a, a nice little event with um, you know about 100 student participants. And so then these were the top three right here. And so I thought that it was very cool, very uh, creative, really artsy. And um, you know, I actually I made a very good friend and contact through USLS, which would be Alicio, Dr. Alicio De Leon. And uh, with him, me and him started a, a program with uh, Alexito. And so what happens is Alexito is a nonprofit organization. They bring in middle school, high school students, and we give them tours around the six different colleges at the university. And it's really nice because, just like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of direction when I wanted to go to college. And so us giving them you know, a little bit of an opportunity and um, oh, expanding their mind to what else is out there besides like a labor job or a field job or anything that's kind of like stereotypical for you know, post high school for a Latino student. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's something inspiring and that's something that you know, we just really try to change the scope of these kids' lives. Next slide. And so with all that, you know, um, we're just really trying to set an example with uh, USLS and I appreciate everything that, you know, Dr. Suarez has done for us. And, uh, you know, we want to promote leadership and we want to promote growth and, um, you know, setting the next wave of Latino leaders in the world. You know, we just wish the best. So thank you. Our, ne our next uh, speaker is Maria Lupe Duran, who is a sophomore in Global Resource Systems. Um, first, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, this means a lot. Um, I want to introduce a little bit more about myself and kind of give you guys a backstory of me. I'm a sophomore. Uh, my major is Global Resource Systems. I was born in Mexico. I was born in Guanajuato. My family and I moved to the United States when I was around eight, and now we live in Davenport. Um, so. That was a big change. <laughs> um, growing up, my mom is very traditional, um, my dad as well. Um, I didn't, they never educated me or kind of taught me that um, about higher education. Um, I think most of my childhood I thought that eventually I was just gonna get married and like have kids and not go to college until I, I went to high school. Um, that's when my life completely kind of changed um, because my advisors, my counselors were talking about education and they were talking about how I could go to college and how I could do anything I wanted to do. Um, and it wasn't until my sophomore year that I kind of like told my parents that I wanted to go to college and they didn't react <laughs> the way I wanted them to. It, <laughs> it was really hard. Um, they kind of just didn't understand what college was. They didn't understand that there was other methods to go to college. Um, they kind of only saw college as a, like money, you know? It was only like you were gonna waste your money, what if you can't make it, what if you're, you're this or you're that? And that was really hard for me because I think my whole high school career, I was so focused on educating my parents that I didn't really educate myself about going to college and what it was like to go to college. Um, but I did my senior year, I, I realized more things about myself and things that I liked doing and things that I wanted to do. Um, and that's when I got engaged with a lot of civic engagement. I did a lot of protests in high school. I became my class president. I was the first Mexican class president at my high school. And that was really good, at, like that was a really good accomplishment for me because I wanted my parents to kind of see that everything that they had done, it was worth it. Um, then I got accepted to Iowa State uh, my senior year as well, and I remember I wanted to go to Iowa State and not Iowa <laughs> because I came to a Latino day, and it just felt like a home. And there was a community, there were, I met a lot of people that I was just like, I wanna be there. <laughs> Throughout high school, I realized that I wanted to help my community. I knew a lot and I educated myself a lot about the Mexican culture and what it was like not only for people who came to the United States as my, in, my, like in my age, but also for Chicanos. But then I realized when I came here that I didn't know a lot about other cultures, about other Latinx people and like their cultures and their experiences. And that's when I was like, how am I gonna help um, more of my community if I only, I'm only like put in this box? 
So that's when I found that there was a minor and like a major in US LS Latino studies. And that just kind of changed my, my mind. Um, Cause that's, that's what I want to do. My major is global resource systems and my focus is in Latino and Latin America. And I want to focus in education and politics cause I feel like those go together. But I don't only want to learn about their culture back home, but also how their culture has changed here in the United States and how immigration has changed. And by taking um, the class with Lucia, that kind of just changed my, my mind about everything. I learned about Puerto Ricans and what they go through, which is something that I was never educated, not even in like high school. Um, I got to meet a lot of Puerto Rican people here and like kind of hear their experiences. That meant a lot for me. I learned about migration waves, which was something very different for me. Um, so I think this program is very helpful, not for only like students um, who are white, who want to learn about our culture, but also for us Latino students who want to know more where we come from and how we got here. Because <laughs> there's been a lot of changes with, between in our cultures. And I think that's really important for everyone kind of just to know that um, where we come from, the culture, how our culture has changed, how's, how, how has our language has changed as well. Because that's, that's very important for us. Um, so I'm very thankful for this program. And now I'm the ambassador. And we really started. So I'm very excited to kind of meet more students and be able to kind of help others. Um, so I'm very excited. Yeah. <laughs> now we will hear from our uh, USLS student program assistants, and we'll start um, with Austin Bitetoe, who is a senior in aerospace engineering. That was pretty good. Is this audible? Okay, yep, that's on. <laughs> Excellent. So. Uh, like you said, my name is Austin Vitito. I am a senior in uh, aerospace engineering as well as languages and cultures for professions. Actually, if you could go to the next slide. Sorry, I'm gonna have to kind of go through these. Um, so anyways, that's the first part of a uh, little background, some context about me. Um, my hometown is Waukee, Iowa, which is on the west side of Des Moines for any locals here. Um, and I guess outside of that, I saw Joe did this, so I may as well too. My hobbies outside of my academic life um, include all things music as well as sports and reading. Let's go to the next one. Thanks. So, uh, my involvement with uh, USLS has included primarily uh, development of the program website as well as migration of the online section of the 211 course, which is our introductory uh, course from Blackboard to Canvas and lots and lots of troubleshooting therein, um, as well as preparations for the symposium that we're all at today. And so, uh, as I stated a moment ago, my primary major is aerospace engineering, and this uh, understandably leads to a lot of questions from friends and peers and colleagues as to why I am involved in language and cultural studies. And I find that a lot of these questions ultimately boil down to how and why, uh, both of which I'll cover. I'll do the how first, because that's the easy part. So, how I got involved is I knew that I wanted to study Spanish in high school. It was a topic um, about which I was very passionate um, all throughout high school. I knew I wanted to continue that here at Iowa State. Um, when my advisor introduced me to uh, the LCP program, I knew that would be uh, the, probably the ideal fit for me, and that has turned out to be uh, the correct assumption, I believe. Um, and so a brief description of what that is. The LCP program is uh, essentially a Spanish major uh, that is tailored to students in certain degree fields, including engineering, uh, in my case. And so what I found was that through my language study, which of course was part of it, I developed a pretty profound uh, cultural curiosity. Um, I was introduced to aspects and elements of uh, Latinx cultures and the diversity therein uh, that I had never known before, that I'd never been introduced to before. And so that, uh, again, was, was driven by the language study and kind of explains how I ended up especially uh, involved with USLS. So if you go to the next one. So now I'll get to the why, which uh, to me is more important and perhaps a little more interesting too. So uh, why should I be involved in this? Why should I have an interest in this? This is so far flung from my degree field, right, from aerospace engineering. Um, and I guess not unlike uh, Dr. Binken, I am not of a Latinx background. I don't have any uh, 
family connections to the community. Um, but I guess the, the argument that I make, not argument, but the, the position that I take regarding this um, is one that I've echoed to many friends in the past, and that is that no matter your field, uh, be it certainly engineering uh, or education, science, medicine, communication, whatever that field may be, um, your work, just like your life, does not occur in a vacuum. Uh, your work can affect people on varying scales depending on what you're doing, but it is inevitably going to have an effect on people maybe just in your community or potentially uh, people all across the world depending on what in particular you're doing. But regardless of that, as we, uh, we have a country that grows uh, more and more diverse every single year with better representation and higher representation of people from different backgrounds, I think it's especially important to uh, understand and respect the cultures and uh, the differences uh, between those people whose lives you are inevitably going to be affecting. And I say respect here, and I think on the surface level, uh, it's pretty easy to treat people you know, with respect. Uh, I think that's something that, especially around here, a lot of people uh, are probably taught to do from a young age. And that's a great start, but I think for a more profound uh, respect, a more profound uh, understanding and appreciation, uh, that understanding has to happen. And uh, for people like myself, um, and there's a lot of us uh, in this part of the country, um, I think that takes a very deliberate and a very conscious effort to seek out information uh, regarding those differences so that we can reach that sort of deeper level of, of respect that can lead to ultimately better harmony within our communities. And then one more. So, sort of looking ahead, um, what I hope to see, uh, I guess in a, on a large scale and small scale, um, I certainly hope to see a continued uh, bridging of the gap between the STEM majors and the studies of languages and cultures. I certainly think the LCP program here at ISU has done a tremendous job of that, and hopefully that continues, and hopefully, uh, if even in some small way, um, I can continue that progress. And second point there. It's been a long morning. <laughs> Anyways, as I said, um, I certainly hope that I can use uh, the knowledge that I've gathered through my involvements in all these different programs to be the best ally, the best neighbor, the best friend that I can be uh, to everybody involved uh, in my community. Our next, next speaker is uh, John Osorio, who is a graduate student in, industrial in the Industrial Design Program. All right, so I'm just gonna be uh, very brief. How I'd just like to introduce myself and share with you all um, how I got to the USLS program. Um, so basically, well, as, as Bonar already said, I am from Colombia. Um, I don't know where in Colombia I am from, because I was born in one city, but was raised by a family from another city, but lived most of my life in a small town outside a third city. Those are three different regions, and so every time people ask me, where in Colombia are you from? I was like, hmm. It's, it's a difficult question. And so, but uh, that brings me kind of, uh, kind of here, so, I am a younger sibling. My, uh, my older brother is born in Ames. He's, uh, he's 32 years old. And uh, that experience stems from the time my parents spent here over 30 years ago when my father was doing his master's degree here at Iowa State. So this is when my family started developing those pretty deep roots. Um, with, uh, with pretty much the US and, and, uh, and Iowa and specifically. Our, my family has always been pretty close to American culture in that sense. So my father and my mother both came here to accompany my father during his grad school. And that was when my, my brother was born. A few years later, went back to Colombia. I was born there. And then a few years uh, gone by, my brother came here do his master's degree in graphic design. Um, then, uh, and then, yours truly, is finishing now his master's degree here also. All of this would have never have been possible be, uh, without two people who I wanna make a mention of, who have been there for my father, for my brother, and for me throughout this whole 30 years. Uh, 
they're a well, they're an American couple. The man is Mexican. The woman is American. The names are Jaime and Daphne Reyes. Uh, I don't know if anybody uh, has heard of them. They're pretty popular, uh, or at least I think. But so th this kind of a journey c brings me here initially as a as a motivation to excel as a well as well this comes from an awareness of you know being latino right in a foreign land far away in a well in a in a highly competitive environment that was one of the first realizations and kind of things i tried to prepare myself for so be highly competitive and be inspired by the notion that uh, nothing will kind of be a better advocate for where you come from um, rather um, more than the work you leave behind and the impact you make on your community. So this, during my master's degree, this brought me to uh, meet uh, Dr. Suarez. Uh, wh when, I, when I actually came across uh, the, the PR and design assistant position, and so I thought about this like, hey, uh, this is a great opportunity to apply my skills to imp and basically improve in a very immediate way, improve the experience for our fellow Latinos here uh, in our campus. And so I just thought it, w it was a great opportunity. And I think that's a, a way that we kind of, uh, we were able to click on that first meeting. And, uh, and so that, uh, that has been a pretty good, a very good milestone throughout my career here because it's a great opportunity, again, to actually be able to serve all of you and all of the community around campus uh, while doing the things I like, first of all, also, but also, um, uh, let's see, what was I gonna say? It, I just messed it, <laughs> but basically, it was a. Uh, it was just this uh, great thing that came along the way, to actually be able to prove, as a Latino, that we are basically no different than anybody else in terms of skill, in terms of work ethic, in terms of rigor, and in terms of discipline and how we do our work. And so I am very motivated to keep, to keep, uh, to keep doing this uh, this work f f for everybody and for and for our community here on campus. Uh, that, was, that was pretty much all I got for today. And again, thank you to Dr. Suarez for bringing me on board. And, uh, and yes, uh, I'm, I'm here to help and always happy to help. Thank you. And Last but not least, we'll have a perspective from ISU for, for you PROMIS program. Uh, Lorena Elias San Martinez, uh, who is a sophomore in Integrated Studio Arts, has prepared a video, then she will briefly, for a couple of minutes, discuss uh, the video afterwards. So we'll, we'll watch the video first. single thought became something more than just words, combined into a single sentence. It became a meaning that I didn't quite understand, not at first at least. Because everything from before started with a single thought. And with that thought, all those fears that kept themselves well hidden these past years like some sort of parasite with no cure to aid with the pain. But I remember, I know, that they are just words. And yet I somehow end up believing them at times, like there's some sort of hidden spring that has no end or any sign of stopping. It was easier to simply close my eyes, slowly start to drift. And I could feel my mind floating. Floating was easier, to be honest. And now I have came with the conclusion that I have placed myself in some sort of trance that started actually not too long ago. There were those rays of light, like light hitting off of diamonds. 
a breath of life that wasn't right and something wanting to be free to see above the water. But each time I rose, I took a deep breath and back underwater I said. It was comforting. I felt safe. But I could still see the light reflecting down at me. And suddenly, I was pushed above the sea level, as if my reality, my heart said enough. The air, the air felt right for once. My arms tired and yet I somehow hoisted myself back to shore. And I stayed like that for quite some time. But the sky, the first thing I noticed was the sky. When I looked, I saw the stars and just seeing those stars, I thought of home. Home. I cried, not just for home, but for more. I finally cried in silence, but I didn't want help. Not yet, at least. Mourn. I mourned for my loss, for family that I lost, dreams that faded and regrets I never looked at piled up before me and finally setting themselves on fire to nothing but glowing embers of their existence. So what then? What about now? I thought. I sit. I think, I draw. There are days when I draw with a tear-stained face because in drawing I found an escape. I'm emotional, yes. But this, this is new. This, this is change. This, this is where I need to be. I struggled, yes. but I struggled before. And at the top of the hill, the hill I want, need to climb. I've been there before, not that long ago. And the view is not bad. not bad at all so each time I wanted to disappear I remembered those that I love I remember those that told me I could and for them I do this I show my love through my work with them I can make it so here's to the years of struggling struggling for them, but in the end, it'll be worth it. It'll definitely be worth it, because I have shown, I will show, that I can do this. Not just for me, but for everyone. Um, can you guys hear me? All right, so, okay, I'm trying to get over my brain, like what just happened? Uh, it's been a while, so I'll just introduce myself again. Uh, my name is Lorena Senalias Martinez, and um, I'm a sophomore here at Iowa State, and um, my major currently, I'm an ISA student, which is basically studio arts, and I'm also c currently pursuing um, two uh, minors, one in Latino studies and one in religions. And so, um, a little bit of background for me. Um, as mentioned before, I am an ISU uh, for You Promise student out of a class of, I believe, of 23 middle school kids in one little room in an elementary school is where everything kind of started for me. Um, growing up, I've only known one school, which was a Molten Extended Learning Center, recently that had been changed to just a regular elementary school. But um, kind of like going back to those days, uh, both my family, uh, both my parents uh, immigrated from Mexico 
And I have a pretty big family, but the only family that I know is from my dad's side, which is at least, like, I'm trying to remember, like, 13 aunts and uncles on one side, and there's more, but that's another story. Well, um, well, for me, growing up, I was, I grew up a very diverse community. I didn't actually know what race was until it actually hit me, um, due to, like, an incident, but that's another story. But anyway, (laughs) um, growing up for me, uh, I was, I was raised to believe in the power of what a voice could be used for, um, very much so much that I involved in so, myself in after school programs such as Wild Girls, uh, the Sea Film program in Des Moines. Oh, I'm originally from Des Moines, I should mention that. And so, um, for me, speaking out is something that I hold very, very dearly to myself. It is something that I actually know that it is something I wish to do further. And for me, um, the reason why I chose to be an ISA student was because through art I found a new, um, kind of like a new idea or feeling <laughs> through it. It was something I knew how to communicate without words. Um, for me, it was speaking words is just kind of difficult for me because I don't know how to properly convey them but through art I found that very helpful. But one of the biggest lessons that I've learned throughout the years of growing up was that the hardest words to say are the ones needed to be said. It is something that is always like told to me, is something I still carry with me today. Um, For the video, it actually, it was a project given to us uh, for the ISU, for you promised about what the promise means to me. And um, for those of you who don't know what the ISU for you promise is, I'm gonna try my best to explain it because I just, I'm not sure. I might hit some points, I might miss a few, so we'll see how it goes. So um, from what I know, the ISU for you promise is a promise with I would say with two other elementary schools, one being Moulton and another being, um, I'm trying to remember, like MLK. And for every year completed there, uh, you have one year of tuition paid off completely. And so I was there since preschool and I didn't actually uh, know about the promise. Like I had heard of it, I was there when it was announced. But the reason why I thought it didn't include me was actually, because of my principal. So this is a story I always like to bring up because it had such a huge turning point in my life. And looking back at it now, I'm just like, wow, that actually happened. So real quick, um, the reason why I thought I wasn't eligible for this promise was because um, when it was first announced, Everyone in my class, this is just one small group, mind you, this is just one small group. We've known each other since we were like babies and so we're just like, okay. (laughs) But um, we were excited about it, thinking that this was our chance to college because college in the background, it was like something we wished to pursue, but it's different from wanting from what could actually happen. And for that, Hearing it, we just got excited. We just were like thinking this is our chance. This is like, we can do this. Sadly, our principal did not think that way. I still remember the words very clearly, what she said to us. Uh, She said uh, that the promise wasn't for us and that we were were never gonna graduate high school, let alone go to college. And oh, um, I'm getting a little bit teary-eyed, but like, When I think back to that day, I kind of get angry instead (laughs) because it's not something you you want to hear from a person who is, even though they do have authority, is someone you just, you don't imagine hearing that from, saying that you can't do it, that they don't believe you. And well, as you can see now that I'm here, so I proved proved them wrong and everyone else. But um, that was such a huge turning point for us because not only did it tell us like there are people who don't believe in us with our community being very close, but it did allow us to challenge ourselves. And um, 
being here at Iowa State and actually going to the Latino studies, I was able to learn more about my own culture that sadly that we do not learn as much in high school. In high school, it's usually about, uh, revolving around uh, the history of the United States, but not specifically about how it became to be. If it was said, it was only mentioned for like five seconds for like each um, timeline. And so, for Latino studies, I actually took in my first year. I had Miss Myers, and I love those pumpkin muffins. Yes, I did. That was the best. <laughs> and um, going to going through that class, it really did open my mind to the history behind like not only Mexico but also um, other countries involved and how it came to be. And I fell in love with it. I thought, okay, I'll just take this class. I just need the credit, <laughs> but in the end, it did uh, make me want to further pursue um, a Latino, uh, major, my Latino minor. And so, looking at this video now, it's kind of hard, just because there are still those feelings of self-doubt, but also like the preservation of that I, could, I can succeed and that I will succeed. Okay, so we'll open up to the, to the floor for questions that you may have for the students. So I don't have a question, but I wanted to say thank you for you know, being in higher education for many years. And it's sometimes very intense, and sometimes we forget what we're here and what we're doing, what we're doing. But when you tell your story, you remind me why I'm here and why I'm doing my job. So I really want to thank you for that. Yes. Uh, Lorena, how did you uh, make the video? The stop action <laughs> So actually about that video, fun fact that actually it only took me one night to complete that. And so this is nonstop. So I just used my phone. Um, I used the, uh, I'm not sure what it's, uh, the professional term it's called, but that one button where it, it records really fast. And so, uh, it took me like about, um, I want to say five hours to complete that um, image. And that's without not looking at any other image. And so that all came from my head. Um, the poem itself actually took me like a couple of days, like three days, to first write it out, edit, and then kind of like, again, record in like two hours. And so, um, for uh, the video itself, yeah, I just used my phone um, and just whatever I could use from my brain because I'm not good with technology. Yeah. You're actually very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are there other questions? Yes. Thanks, you guys. Um, how, when you, maybe for some possible minors, um, students in USL is 11 that are here today, when y'all talk about, um, for those of you who might be in the job market soon, when you might talk about, like, oh, someone says, you're a US Latino <coughs> Studies minor, huh? What, what does that mean? Or, you know, like, why might I hire you because you have that experience or academic experience? Like, what would your response be, you know, to someone in an interview setting maybe to that kind of question? Maybe for Austin and Joe. You can start us off. All right. So it's, uh, I actually have had conversations with recruiters uh, where that gets brought up, where this experience uh, gets brought up. And uh, while I, sure, I don't give them the entire spiel <laughs> that I did here, but um, I certainly sort of boil it down to the fact that um, you know, I've gone through the same engineering coursework um, as everybody else. I'm just as skilled an engineer as anyone else you're going to talk to. But because of this experience, uh, certainly with language and I think much more importantly with culture, um, I'm far more well-rounded, and uh, it, it could be that I work on a team without a single Latinx member. Hopefully that's not the case, but even if it is, um, I believe that I'm far more well-prepared uh, and well-equipped to uh, work in a team with, with differences of any kind as a result of those studies. And that's, yeah, based on that, was, was that good? Thank you. I'm, gonna, I'm, like, I'm a senior, so I'll be needing that. Thank you. <laughs>
No, for sure. It definitely makes you a lot more desirable in employers' eyes, and you know they like to see that you're, you know, like uh, Austin said, very well-rounded and uh, very more inclusive. Um, you know, uh, with more of the historical background that comes with the Latinx minor, you learn more within the Spanish department, within Latinx history, and so uh, definitely, like in my last internship when I was in Marshalltown, you know, that has a very high Hispanic population, and so I was over at Lenox and. You know, that's uh, it was like almost a third of the uh, the workers there are you know li Latino Latinx, and so it was uh, you know the HR department they really liked the fact that I was uh, involved with this program, and so even just being a minor, uh, you know, it just makes you that much more desirable. Other questions. Uh, is there something that the program could, could, could be doing that we're not doing right now that you're That's a tough question. I think all of us, we've uh, certainly enjoyed our involvement, but maybe we haven't been involved for long enough or haven't uh, witnessed enough of the growth to really know uh, and be able to articulate what steps the program needs to take next. For now, we just kind of are, are working with Dr. Suarez for whatever her vision may be, which I think we all trust in. <laughs> so Maybe uh, just kind of promote more, um, do like a more, like a bigger promotion of the program. Um, and not only explain it um, as of, how can I say, like explain the why you should take it, you know? Um, because there's so many reasons. It doesn't matter if you're a Latinx um, student or a white student or a black student. It's just something that is really helpful for everyone to just kind of under, understand that like a lot of Latinx people are here and they're taking over a lot of things and just being able to understand other cultures. So it's kind of like more promoting it in that aspect that is gonna help you um, that way, if that makes sense. Yes. Sorry, I can't remember your name, but Thank you. you said that you have to educate your parents about going to college and how important it is. And that's a very common problem among our youth. So do you have any pointers or things that you learned that you <laughs> recommend that others do? Yeah. Um, every family is different. I know for a fact that my family was very different in a way where like my mom was very close-minded, but not because she didn't want to support me. Not, that's something I learned. Because in high school, I was mad all the time. I was mad because I would see other students which parents were supporting them, you know? I saw Mexican students where their parents were like, I don't understand, but okay, go, you know, do, do your thing. While my parents weren't doing that. Um, and after coming here and struggling so much my first semester and my second semester, I realized that like I had like something that you have to do, it's kind of like not be mad because you can't be mad at something that they weren't taught. That's something that you have to kind of, and it's hard to get through it, you know, because in the moment when you're like talking, I was talking to my parents, I remember one of our conversations, I was like, mom, I'm going to Iowa State, you know, I need to buy this and that and that. She's like, but why do you need to buy it? I don't understand why you're leaving. And I was just mad. I was like, why is she doing all of this? Why are my parents doing all of this? And it's just like they were scared, you know, and understanding that and understand, not being mad at them, not yelling at them, not doing something to make them feel even bad. It's just, just understanding where they come from um, and educating them. I, I learned so much now that I can look back. I learned so much about my parents that I'm so proud of, you know. But it took me a while to kind of like, process everything because it's hard you know you want to be like other students but then you have to realize that you're not like other students you're different and you just have to work a little bit harder but that's not bad it's actually really good for you so it's just understanding and just putting yourself in their shoes and just keep on going and don't give up i told myself i was like oh, am i doing the right thing i told myself so many times and now i'm like i am you know i'm a sophomore i'm a global resource major i know i'm going to be able to give back to my community and help more even more students eventually um but also educate more parents as as well 
Mm-hmm. And my name is Lupe. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's thank uh, our students again for their perspectives. <laughs>